Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's Stamping September video. Today we're going to make 10 cards for men. Having said that, these cards may be suitable for anybody. Anyone who likes the shapes, the colours, the designs that I create today. They don't have to be just for men. So I've gathered some supplies. I have 10 card blanks, 10 stitched rectangle card panels, both cut from the same smooth white cardstock so they match. I've got some grungy sentiment label stamps. I've got my entire collection of rubber stamps. I don't have many, I prefer photopolymer, but I'm gonna use these today. And then I've got a selection of dies that I think will work well on these cards. They'll enable me to keep them clean and simple, and they're quite straightforward, geometric, for the most part, shapes. For my first card, I'm going to use this camera die to create a camera icon for the front of my card. And I'm going to colour this smooth white cardstock with Vintage Photo Distress Oxide, which I think works very well with the camera. For my stamping, I'm going to use this Crackle Stamp and Walnut Stain, which is a darker brown than the Vintage Photo. And I'll just press this down onto here, give it a good press without shifting the card and we've got some nice crackle on there. To clean my rubber stamps I usually just use a baby wipe or a damp cloth. I do have some Stazon stamp cleaner which I use on rubber stamps if I've used something like archival ink or Stazon ink. So I've die cut my camera You'll have to excuse my Smurf-like hands. I was using some blue ink last night and got rather messy and it stained my skin. I'm going to use matte gel medium to stick this down. And I want it in the middle, in the top half. Press that down with a bit of non-stick deli paper. And on this card, I'm going to use one of these capital letter blocky stamps. This is Tiny Type from Clearly Besotted. And I've got the best wishes one here. I think these ones for this are going to be too big. So I'm going to use these for some of the cards as well, I think. I'm going to stamp that in black just for a little bit of difference. I could use the vintage photo or the walnut stain, but I think the black's going to stand out nicely. I'll put tape runner on the back of my card panel. I'm going to stick that on the card and trim the card down. And as a finishing touch on this card, I'm going to flood this area here, which is the flash of the camera. And this area here, which I guess is the viewfinder or something. Yes, probably the viewfinder. And then this bit here, which is the lens. So the shiny glassy bits. I'm going to flood with crystal glaze. You could use glossy accents or some kind of nouveau drop for this so that when they dry, they dry clear and shiny. And that's card number one done. For card number two, I'm going to use some alphabet dies to spell out the word dad. And I'm going to cut those from this bit. This is Broken China, which is a really lovely greeny blue. So now I've got this rubber stamp, it's got diagonal stripes on it and I'm going to use Uncharted Mariner to ink that up. This is a darker greeny blue and I'll stamp that on. And now I'm going to use these dies to cut my letters. So I've got my letters all nicely die cut. I'm dusting them with talcum powder to remove any static moisture or grease. And now I'm going to stamp on them with embossing ink using this silicone splatter stamp. I could splatter with water or a mixture of water and PVA glue, or I could splatter with metallic paint. But doing it this way with a stamp just gives me a little bit more control over where my splats end up. So I'll dip that in gold embossing powder. And now I'll heat those with my heat tool. Now 
before sticking these to my card panel I'm going to stack them so I've got two die cuts of each letter that I've stacked together made from scrap pieces of paper and I'll just glue these on top So I'm going to make this card landscape because it fits the letters better, I think. I'm going to put the A as close to the middle as I can get it. And I'm going to add a happy birthday again in that capital letter font, again in black to make it stand out from the rest of the card. And there we have card number two. Of course, you could make this card using any stamp patterns, any designs, and you could make it in a person's name. Doesn't have to be dad, but that's that one. For card and number three, I'm going to make an aperture in the front of my card panel using this star die. And now I'm gonna cut these smaller stars out of the same white cardstock. Now I'm going to ink these up with shaded lilac, a distress oxide. Try and get a fairly even coverage. Now I'm going to add some visual texture using this rubber stamp. It's heart shaped, but I'm just going to stamp on over the star so you'd never know what shape the original stamp was and I'm going to take some faded jeans and go around the outside just to darken the edges slightly. I'll put some foam tape on the back of my panel with the aperture in it just to give it a little bit of lift. And I'll put some matte gel medium glue on the back of my big star and I'm going to pop that in the hole and press it down and get that positioned so it fills the hole that it was cut from. You could just colour and stamp on a square of card and stick it behind or even just do the card blank behind the aperture but this way I get the stitching detail that's on the star and the darkness around the edge. So my recess star will match the stars that are gonna go on the top, something like that. Right, so I've stuck my stars on. And I'm going to stamp one of these grungy label stamps. This one says good luck. I've dusted this card with corn flour, no talcum powder, and I'm going to stick it in gold embossing powder. So I've cut that out with my scissors and I'm going to put a bit of foam behind it and put it there in the middle in that direction. And to bring in a little bit of extra shine and gloss and dimension and bling, I'm going to add some gold Nouveau drops just around the stars. And there we have card number three. Right, for card number four, I've die cut lots of these little stitched diamond shapes out of smooth white cardstock. And I'm gonna color a load with salvage patina some with peacock feathers and some with speckled egg. So I put all my little diamonds on post-it notes just to keep them still while I stamp on them. And so I can stamp on them as kind of one unit. I've got a rubber stamp here with polka dots on it. And I'm gonna pop some peacock feathers on 
and take the salvage patina diamonds and add the dots so now my diamonds are dotty diamonds and i've got this xoxo heart shaped stamp here and i'm going to stamp that on with peacock feathers again onto the salvage patinas and on the peacock feather ones, the darkest ones, I'm going to do some heat embossing. So I'll just dust that with talcum powder. I'm inking up this rubber flower stamp with embossing ink. And I'm going to stamp that so that each little diamond has some. And I'll dust that with some super fine silver. So I'm going to do a portrait card, but I put my panel on my mat landscape and I'm going to tape it down at this end to keep it still. When I want to run something vertically up and down a portrait card quite often I find it easier to do it landscape because I can see whether something's straight or not. And this bit of washi here is going to hold everything still but it's also going to give me a bit of a guideline to line things up against. So I've spread some PVA glue there, high tech PVA. I've marked the halfway mark there just so I can get things lined up. And I've dipped my diamond into the glue and I'm going to pop it on the front there. And I'm getting the side point, this side here, lined up with the edge of my washi tape. I'm using high tack PVA for this because it kind of grabs the die cut onto the card and holds it there while it dries. I find with matte gel medium you get a lot of wiggle room but if you knock what you're trying to stick down then it will move whereas if you knock that now it's not going anywhere so sometimes I use matte gel medium sometimes high tack PVA. If you'd like more cards for men ideas then check out the video I've linked in the video description. In it I make three cards for three of the men in my life and share questions and prompts that will help you design cards for anyone you know, not just men. There's also a downloadable PDF of the questions and prompts in the description of that video, so do check that out. Right, I've got my diamonds stuck down now. I'll snip off the bits that are hanging off the end, erase that little pencil mark that I made. When the glue and everything has dried, I'm going to go in with an eraser again and erase any little bits of adhesive that are poking out the sides and making a mess. I think I've mostly managed to avoid getting mucky fingerprints on it. I'm going to turn this into a thank you card using one of these grungy label stamps. I've got it straight in the bottom right hand corner there using my set square. And now I shall heat emboss it in silver. And that's card number four. So I've got this big rubber stamp here and I'm going to cover it in Victorian velvet and a little misting with some water and now I'm going to pop some card on top and I'll press it down using my brayer and now I've got a really lovely impression now I've got some vintage photo distress oxide that I've added some water to and I've got my smusher and I'm going to smush that on top what I'm trying to do here is create whoops come back here create a little bit of a a layered grungy vintage look and I'm going to go a bit darker with some walnut stain. I'm going to use this crackle stamp with the walnut stain again like I did on the camera to add a bit of visual texture. And then I'm just going to mist over it a bit, add a few big blobs, and then pick up any wet colour. Now I'm going to use these stitched hexagon dies to cut out some stitched hexagons. So I've cut out two of each, although I probably won't use two of each. I'm going to take some walnut stain and just go around the edge to add a bit of definition. 
bit of shading. And just as I did with the letters, I'm going to add a bit of metallic splatter using a splatter stamp. This one's a sort of circular line slash splatter stamp. And I'm going to use copper for this one. I think it goes nicely with the Victorian velvet and the browns that I've used. All right, I've got my hexagons. I'm going to have them clustered in the middle a bit like this. I've also stamped happy birthday and heat embossed it in the same copper that I used on here. So I'm just going to get those glued down. Now I'm going to add my sentiment on top and I've put a little bit of craft foam under this just to give it some dimension. I'm going to add this other hexagon here. I think it just needs a little bit of something down the bottom. And to finish it off, some copper, penny, Nouveau drops and that is card number five done and dusted. On to card number six and I'm going to use squares this time but out of my squares I'm going to cut a heart so there'll be a heart shaped hole in the middle. Now I've got four identical squares with heart shaped holes in the middle. I'm going to cut them with greens this time. I'm doing two in ice spruce two in bundled sage. So these are fairly muted greens, not too bright. I'm going to take the two iced spruce hearts and pop them on a post-it just to hold them still while I stamp on them. And I've got a sentiment stamp from this set. It says sending love and I'm going to stamp it as visual texture over this. I'm going to do some multi-generational stamping. This is pine needles, distress oxide. And I'm going to take this heart stamp. It's got some grungy text on it and a little flower. And again, take the pine needles and stamp it over there. And I'm going to add some gloss to this using heat embossing. I've got this Ranger Emboss It Dabber, which contains embossing ink. And I can pop these in clear embossing powder and then heat them. So I'll come back when I've done that. So I've heat embossed these twice with clear embossing powder. Just gives them a nice bit of shine and some dimension. There's a sort of beveling of the edges when you do it that way. I've also added some thin foam squares to the back to give them a bit of lift. I've marked halfway in that direction on my card. I'm just going to shuffle up a little bit with my uh, T-square ruler and get the first two down where I want them. I'm going to go in this direction and I want it to be about there because that is how far away that one is from the centre. And now I can add this one and give it a similar gap here and here. And then this one should slot in perfectly. I can get my eraser and remove that pencil mark. So I've stamped the Sending Love that I used on these squares. I stamped it in pine needles and then I cut it out with a stitched rectangle die. And I've put two foam squares, one on top of the other on the back, to support the middle where it goes over this bit here. And I've added some glue on either side as well to help it stick to the squares and stay flat. And as a finishing touch, I'm going to put three pale gold Nouveau drops on each of these two squares there, just for a little bit of something extra and to bring in a little bit of bling. And that's card number six done. On to card number seven, and I have cut some tags out of smooth white cardstock using these dies and put them on a post-it to get them all lined up together. This is my very, very clean embossing ink ink pad because what I want to do today with these is some emboss resist 
We'll emboss the pattern onto this using clear embossing powder. So obviously I don't want to have any dirty embossing ink on there because that will show through. And we'll pop this on here like that. I'll add a bit of scrap on top, press it down so I get a good impression. So even though I've used clear ink on that, I can still see that it is stamped well. We'll dip that in clear embossing powder and heat it with my heat tool. The embossing powder has now cooled and set. So I'm going to blend on some blues. This one is Stormy Sky. And then Faded Jeans and then finally Chipped Sapphire. Right, so the ink's on. We'll wipe off excess ink using a microfiber cloth, so that should buff up the heat embossing nicely. So I'm thinking a diagonal design, I like this. And I'll use tacky glue to glue down the tags because they're slightly warped due to the heat embossing. And tacky glue will just keep them press down nicely while they adhere. Having said that, I'm going to pop this one up on foam tape just to give it a little bit of lift. So that can go there. So there's a nice little bit of dimension there. And that one can go up there flat again with glue. Before I stick anything else on, I put tape runner on the back of this and I'm gonna stick it on my card blank and trim the card blank down. Now I've got this Hello grungy label that I've heat embossed in gold. I put a little strip of foam at the bottom there, some glue there, and I'm going to put it here so it's overlapping both of these tags. And you know what's coming next? Some gold Nouveau drops to link it all together. To add that gloss dimension, bling, sense of movement and flow to reinforce that diagonal design. And there's card number seven. Very simple, very clean. For card number eight, I've got this wood stamp. It's like a tree trunk has been sliced and you're looking down at all the rings in the tree trunk. I'm not using it for a wood effect though. I'm going to use it just to add a kind of radial pattern on these cogs that I've cut out from smooth white cardstock. I haven't bothered treating these with talcum powder because I don't mind if stray embossing powder gets stuck, you're not going to notice it. The powder I'm using is a DIY embossing powder. I made it using teal luscious powder and clear embossing powder. If you want to know more about that, then check out my Pigment Powders 101 series because I've got some instructions on how to make your own embossing powder there. So now I'm going to add some brown ink to these over the embossing. We'll start with vintage photo and then go on to walnut stain to add a little bit of darkness. Now we'll just give them a little buff to lift some of the colour off of the embossing. So I've put some PVA on my glass mat here. The high tack stuff, so these stay in place as I stick them down. And I'm going to run a strip of cogs down this side of the card. We'll start with the big ones and have them in the background. Trim these off just so I can see what I'm looking at. So I, I like that down that side. I think we'll have a little cluster here. I 
for all the sentiment, I've got a grungy label that says Imagine, which I think goes well with the idea of cogs and invention. So I've stamped that in walnut stain and now I'm going to cut it out. I often stamp sentiments twice like this just in case I mess up cutting out the first one. So I've added some thin foam to the back of that and I'm going to add my sentiment down here. So that's card number eight. I really like this one. Clean, simple, lots of white space, but still a bit grungy, which is very much up my street. I'm tempted to add some maybe copper Nouveau drops, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave it as it is. So for card number nine, we're doing circles. I've cut some circles out of smooth white card with this stitched circle die and I got five circles and five stamps and five colours. These are all more muted colours but we've got a pinky, yellow, green, greeny blue and a blue-ish into the slightly purples and I'm just going to add a little bit of colour to my stamps here and press my circle on to get an impression. So I've got all my little circles there and I'm gonna add them in a strip down the side of my card. I want to add a little bit of foam just under the top of each circle. So I'll start at the top and pop my first circle down there. And then we'll square a little bit of glue underneath that just to hold it down. I'm using matte gel medium for this. And then I'm gonna layer the next one on top, overlapping it slightly. Then we have a nice row of circles with a bit of dimension. They're lifted up ever so slightly at the top. I've stamped Just For You in black so that it stands out amongst the colour. Put some foam tape on the back and I'll add it down here. I'm actually going to take the foam off the back of that circle because it doesn't need to be there with that sentiment stuck on top. I mounted this on a card blank and now it's time for some bling. You can leave the bling out, depends on what your recipient likes really, I think. That's card number nine, just some simple stamped surf. For my last card, I've cut some fishtail banners out of smooth white card. And I've got a few more rubber stamps here that I'm going to ink up with embossing ink. And I'm going to heat emboss these in gold. This stamp isn't big enough to cover the whole of this. But I'm probably only going to use one end of it anyway. So we'll just press that down there like that. Same with this one. This one I've put on a block. Just so that I can stamp one end. And then I can sort of see where to stamp the other without overlapping them and this one I'll carefully lay all the way across there and now I'll dip these in gold and then heat them with my heat tool so now these have cooled and set I'm going to smush some colour over the embossing so I've got some chipped sapphire which is a lovely indigo a blue violet and now some seedless preserves which is a I guess a red violet sometimes when I do this kind of thing I like to smush and then do the heat embossing and sometimes I do the heat embossing and then the smushing and I think it can look a bit better when you do the heat embossing and then the smushing because the smushing pulls around the heat embossing and you get sort of 
areas of contained colour. The heat embossing and the smushing become integrated with each other, I think, rather than it looking like one thing stuck on top of the other. So I'm going to have another diagonal design. I'm going to start with my biggest banner in the corner there with a little strip, a little border around it. And then I think we'll take this next size banner down and that can go there with a little gap. And then I'll take the third size banner down and echo that pattern up here with the smaller banners. So I'll have the thick one at the edge with a little border and then the thin one with a little gap. So those are all stuck there nicely and I've got a few bits left over that I could use on another card. So that's that one stuck on its card and I've stuck the bits that I chopped off onto this card. So it's a two for one. For this bonus card I've added just a note in the capital letter stamp in black. And then a thinking of you down here, also in black, to help it stand out against the colour and the gold. And this one is going to get some Nouveau drops. And this one I'm going to leave as is, I think. And that brings us to the end of this 10 Clean and Simple Cards for Men video. As I said at the beginning, these cards don't just have to be for men, they can be for anybody who enjoys the kind of style, designs, colours, compositions that I've shown here today. Don't forget to check out that other video that I mentioned earlier about making masculine cards, cards for men, because there's a handout of prompts and questions that you can download that you might find helpful. Right, thanks for joining me today and I hope to see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.